Welcome everyone, my name is Márton Havlicek. I will talk about a project joined with Masud Akbarzadek about designing the geometry of oxidic materials using graphic statics. Oxidic materials are structure systems with unexpected physical behavior. These structures expand perpendicular to the direction of applied tensile force. Because of this strange behavior, these materials have been used extensively, for instance, in the fields of sensors, medical devices, sportwares, and aerospace. These structures have a distinct property, the reentrant faces. In the figure, you can see the most studied oxidic system with its non-convex faces. The purpose of the project is to find a systematic approach to design these reentrant structures. More precisely, we identify systems which can be transformed into oxidic systems. These are called polyhedral systems with an overlaying TAD. Moreover, we describe a methodology using geometric degrees of freedom to transform these systems into oxidic systems. The methodology uses two-dimensional graphic statics proposed by Maxwell and Remke. In 2DGS, the geometry of a structure and its equilibrium are presented by two perpendicular reciprocal diagrams referred to as form and force diagram. These diagrams are topologically dual, meaning that vertices of one diagram correspond to faces of the other diagram and edges of one diagram correspond to edges of the other diagram. Moreover, edges of one diagram are perpendicular to the corresponding ed edges of the other. Figure 2 shows you an example of a front diagram with its force diagram. One can transform a diagram without breaking the reciprocity with its dual diagram. The geometric degrees of freedom describes the number of possible significantly different such manipulations, or differently saying, it describes the number of edges of the diagram which can be freely chosen so that the diagram can be reconstructed from its dual diagram. The GDUF is also related to the states of self-stress. In 2D, the internal GDUF of the force diagram equals the states of self-stress in the form diagram, and that can be computed by the maxwell caladine rule. In the case of a single trapezoid cell, the GDUF is 2, any values can be given to the two parallel edges without breaking the reciprocity, without breaking the reciprocity with its dual diagram. In particular, one can flip the parallel edges, or other ways to saying, we can assign negative values to the parallel edges. Figure 4 suggests a method to create reentrant faces using GDUF. We realize the hexagon as two trapezoids put together, and we manipulated the two trapezoids simultaneously, we assign negative edge length to all vertical edges. This idea can be generalized. We say that an aggregation of polygons in the two-dimensional space is a trapezoid arrangement with a direction, TAD for short, if every polygon is a trapezoid whose two parallel sides are parallel to a given direction T. An aggregation of polygons has an overlaying TAD structure if there exists a TAD so that all edges of the original diagram can be covered by the edges of the TAD. Systems with an overlaying TAD can be turned into reentrant systems, as shown in Figure 5. We impose first a trapezoid grid over the system, and then we simultaneously flip all parallel edges of the trapezoid. Figure 5 shows how to get the most studied oxidic system from a hexagonal configuration. However, not every two-dimensional polyhedral system has an overlaying TAD structure. For instance, given the hexagonal system of figure 6a, the vertical grid doesn't provide an overlaying TAD. It cuts the hexagonal system into rectangles and triangles as shown in figure 7a. However, using 2DGS, we can turn this system into a system with an overlaying TAD structure. We consider the dual diagram of 6a, 
which is figure 6b. Then we impose a horizontal grid on it. This is figure 7b. This horizontal grid is perpendicular to the grid given by the direction. The dual diagram of figure 7b is shown in figure 8a, which is a system of squares and octagons. That system has an overlaying TAD and can be transformed into an oxidic system as shown in figure 8. So again, we started with uh, a hexagonal system, figure 68, and using 2DGS, we turned it into a system with an overlaying TAD. This is figure 8A, and then we used our methodology to turn that into an oxidic system, and that is figure 8 with this methodology, we created a couple of examples. The diagrams in column 1 are examples of convex tessellations, which are transformed into oxidic systems in column 2, and the preliminary FE analysis shows their oxidic behavior. In the last slide, I show you some animations to visualize the content of the presentation. In the first example, we turn a convex tessellation of hexagons, octagons, rhomboids, and dotagagons into an oxidic system without, with our methodology. In the other two examples, we show possible generalizations, future directions of our methodology in 3D. Thank you very much for your attention.